Long before the electric prunes lit up and the Jefferson airplane took off, scientists at the University of Illinois' Digital Computer Laboratory had wired and amplified one of the world's most complex electronic music boxes, scored on punch cards and played on switching circuits. The music you now hear played by ILLIAC II gave notice that where it's at is everywhere, even in the lab. It may not compete with the sounds from your most favorite recording group, but it does emphasize the versatility of that electronic marvel, the digital computer. All is not fun and games, of course. The real importance of computers is to be of service to the ever-increasing demands of a mathematically-oriented society. The computer lab is dedicated specifically to serve the students and faculty in all phases of computer science. Most of our services begin with the consulting group. The consultants are in charge of seeing that the user can get all the information he wants to get about the service area of the department. The consultant answers any questions the user has, will help him with any program he's trying to write. If he needs help with uh, key punch machines or something like that, the consultant knows where to where to send him so that he can get the best use out of our department. The users can come in at any time during the daytime to run on the machines. Uh, I have operators that can help them, and we also do the work for them. They go into room 129, in which is a key punch routing room. They submit their job. They're given a receipt card, and this is also where they come back to pick up their job when it's completed. When they come in and turn in the job, they can ask what the backlog is. This gives them a general idea of how far behind they are on jobs. A user can come into the consulting staff with the data that he has and the information that he would like to have after the work is completed. Give this to the consultant, he will in turn write his program and the program will be turned into the key punch operators. We will do the punching for them and the consultant will pick up the work, run the, prob the program for them on the machine and the user can come in and pick up his completed work. After it has been through the entire process, the user, user didn't have to do anything except bring in the work. Because computers can aid in so many different fields of research, students and staff are requesting more assistance each day. While they do not need a great deal of knowledge in the field of computer science, we find we can serve them much better if they've been formally introduced to the basic concepts of programming prior to using our facilities. If he doesn't know anything about computers and doesn't have hasn't any programming courses or anything, then uh, there's two things he can do. He can one take a book and sit down uh, and learn programming himself, or we do offer a faculty short course in programming that we offer approximately once a semester. It's an eight-week course that any faculty member can come in and sit down. We teach Fortran programming, and in this course they learn how to use the key punches, the routing room, uh, where the consulting office is, how to hand in jobs, how to write programs, and in general, get them started. So looking at it this way, it'd be approximately eight weeks would, if they were taking this faculty short course.
Eight weeks is not a very long time to be in class, but with today's rapidly expanding technology, it took us less time than that to convert our older and our slower 7094 system to a much more sophisticated system, a system that brings to the University of Illinois a much more efficient use of manpower and computer power. In our instance, it will have to do with more than one thing going on at one time. Like in the, on the 7094, a person's job goes into execution, and he has complete control of the machine's facilities. He is the only one running on the machine. Well, this is not the case on the 360. In order to overlap and, and utilize as much machine time as possible, one person may be in execution while another person who has been previously executed may be printing his output and still another person may, another person's job may be reading in from the card reader. So with our Model 50 360 that we've had in here the past three or four months, we've had a situation where one person was executing, another person's job was being read in from the card reader, another job was being punched, and two jobs were being printed, and all of this was going on simultaneously. And this is an example of uh, time shift. In all computer operating systems, there are compromises. In our older 7094 computer, which had a system called Porthos, we were able to achieve a high degree of efficiency, but had to sacrifice a certain amount of compatibility. That is, the ability to take a program which has been written in our system and transfer it to a similar system elsewhere. The installation of our new system has solved this problem. We're taking the uh, operating system 360, which is the 360 equivalent of Porthos, and this system is an IBM product, and it's the universal system as far as, as the 360 computer is concerned. And we can modify it to some extent to better fit our needs and yet we can keep it compatible with other systems across the country to where people coming to the university from other 360 installations can run their jobs on our computer with a minimum of trouble. There was a uh, graphics conference here a few weeks ago, and a very notable example, a fellow had uh, probably a 1,000 card programming language one or PL1 program that he brought from Stanford University. And he compiled a program on our machine and it ran perfectly the first time. So it's a good thing. It's one of the goals that we're striving for. Over the past 20 years, we have been able to work with and influence a great number of people in this country and around the world. Cooperative research efforts with government and industry have resulted in an extension of education programs as well as in major design concepts incorporated in today's computers. We have built two large-scale digital computers and are in the process of building two more. We have used or are using about a dozen commercial computers. Through this blend of education and industry, we hope to continue to develop new tools and ideas for a better service in the field of computer application. One of the new tools and ideas now in use is a communications version of the time sharing that was mentioned earlier. We have extended the power of the computer through the phone lines to the user's home or office. This is the first step in the application of the Illinet concept.
the objective is, in the, over a period of two or three years, to provide a computing facility uh, based here in the building, in the 50 model set, 360 50 model 75 complex, with uh, remote terminals around the campus, and just overall provide a, a extremely powerful computing facility, which will may entail seven or eight computers eventually tied into the network, where a person can have the ability to get access to a very powerful computer with a minimum of turnaround time. In other words, he can turn his job in and it would, the data would come across high speed lines here to the uh, digital computer lab, get onto the high speed computers and back to the, uh, via the same teletype lines to the user. No need to, for him to send his decks by mail or something like that. We've come a long way since old Betsy here was in her heyday some 20 years ago. And as the routine mechanics of determining the likes of pi r square becomes less and less cumbersome, all of us will be allowed a little more time to explore, explain, and enjoy this world of ours.